And now one of the things that being in tech as well um, is that the challenge here is that AI is definitely going to change a lot of job scopes, a lot of landscapes. Now you as an employer, all right, or as a business owner, what do you foresee that um, business owners are going to have to do to not just deal with the AI in terms of technology changes, but upskilling their people? What do you think looking forward, right, business owners need to get uh, ready for? You know, once you start, um, once you go digital, there's no turning back. It's mm. so much better, but it takes a big leap of faith um, to digitize everything. So one of the big things for me, right, uh, was Crown Digital. So we have Crown Coffee as the ongoing cafe business. We didn't try to kind of like digitize it through Crown Coffee, you know. It was Crown Digital. It's a new company, whole new team. So I, I didn't have to write, kind of try to change things. I hired a new team and started off as, uh, you know, as Crown Digital. So, so I, I think that's a big challenge for most organizations. They want to, they try to, and there's a lot of government grants out there that help them. Um, but sometimes when it comes to legacy, the old ways of doing things, it's very, very difficult um, to transform. And it, it comes with a lot of pain. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, business owners have to rethink their business and say, hey, you know, I want to do it and, uh, and, and doing it this way might not get you that, that immediate results. It's a mm -hmm. long drawn game, you know, and uh, are you willing to go through that? It's very painful. And uh, sometimes you have to kind of like decide once and for all, okay, this is it's going to be really difficult. Why don't we just start on a clean sheet of paper? rethink the business and then completely transform it and uh, change the business. And that's a big pivot, right? You know, um, massive. It's massive. Yeah. And, um, and they have to, at some point decide that, you know, and it has to come from the very top and we transform, you know, that is, it's, uh, you know, if you leave it to your, you know, I've seen so much happen, right. And, and, um, in other larger corporates, you know, very, very hard, too much legacy. And, and they leave it to the, the, you know, the managers to do it. It's, it's going to, you're going to spend a lot of money, a lot of time doing it, and you might not get the, the result that you want. It has to come from very top and, and decisions have to be made and, and taking risks, you know, taking risks. You want to do this, it's going to cost a lot of money. You don't know if it works. Taking risk. Uh, you've got to have the appetite for that. Um, I think eventually um, companies will come to a point where, you know, it's either they don't do it or they do it wholesale um, because that half is just not going to, you know, it's going to get you the results you want. It's, it's, it's um, eventually, you know, those who don't survive will not survive. And um, those who pivot and, and they, 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 you know, and then they will do, yeah. As, as, uh, I don't think, at this stage, there are you know companies are getting disrupted. The industry that they are, they're getting disrupted, but they will still survive. They get on, you know. But um, I guess it's the new new retail or the new like retail now. They're facing all the challenges, right? With with the lockdowns coming in and and the real estate, you know, everyone's moving online online now. Eventually, it'll reach a point where it's it's no longer feasible to run uh, those you know traditional way of, you know businesses anymore. And um, they will give up. And then the new guys who come in will probably say, hey, you know, we're not going to go back that way. We're going to start off this way, the new way. And you, you, you will see that, you know, that's when things will really change. Yeah. yeah. Is, is that really that why? Sense. Yeah, it, it, def it definitely does. Is that why you're probably also seeing that, um, you know, the traditional uh, department stores are starting to close down. They're losing traction. You know, big names, uh, old names are all going down. Let, I mean, let's put it this way. Back in the 80s, Yao Han was there, right? But eventually, it, it just left. All our Jap Japanese department stores, less Takashimaya, right, is, is going, well, I'm not saying that they're going bust, but their results are not so good. Do you really think it's got something to do with the technology now? Or is it because of their sourcing? Or is it the old ways? And because customers are evolving with technology faster than the retailers. Do you think that's the case? I think it's the uh, customers. Their lifestyle has changed. You know, um, going out 
on a Sunday, you know, Saturday with friends um, for shopping might not no longer be the, the the thing to do anymore, you know. And um, with with technology, it makes so much sense to just order that thing that you already know what you want, right? You know, online, and then get it delivered to your home. So these are becoming commonplace now, and and um, it's a shift in consumer uh, behavior. Um, mm-hmm. That is, 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 is two things, right? You, technology is evolving, right? And then consumer behavior, you know, people are more on the move now. And they are, they look for convenience. They are busy people and, um, and things that, that they used to do as a, in, an event on the weekend is no longer an event, right? So that's where I think, but I think retail in some countries, you know, are still thriving because in those countries, you know, the consumer um, behavior is still very much, um, you know, alive. They want to go out. It's still cool to, you know, hang out with friends, you know, and go shopping, you know, but maybe in Europe, right, where it's still nice to go into a shop where they value that that human touch and, and, you know, and they're, they're supporting. But I think in Singapore where we are so so um, savvy, right? You know, this is just so, it, it makes sense to just buy online. And um, that's where the retailers are facing that challenge now. Um, but it's just shifting consumer behavior. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, but I, I have think to agree the retailers with have, to, have to really, really, you know, adapt to that. You know, we, we're, we have adapted with Ella. You know, she's, mm. yeah. So, you know, um, and, and we're scaling. So, yeah, so... I think eventually a lot of other players, you know, they're still hanging on. They're, they're doing their best to hang on, but you know, they'll, they'll, hopefully things will, uh, hopefully they'll adapt. And then, you know, I'm sure they are. And yeah. Yeah. I have to agree with you there uh, regarding, um, you know, the, the, uh, the adaptation that is required. Right. But somehow or rather, in this day and age, let's just say, for example, really the lockdown is done. Don't you think that there will be more people who would go back to going back to the stores, going back to the mall? You know, sometimes I don't, I really don't want to wait three, four days for something to come through. I would really like to go to the store and get it. Yeah. So there will be, but, um, you know, you can't deny that out of that group of, um, you know, consumers who, who, who are like you, who will go down right to 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 buy on the spot there's a big chunk of them that would have already bought it online and 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 that whatever that's left is just not enough to, to mm. keep the retailers going yeah. you know so so that's a fundamental behavioral change right and that, yeah, that's true and it's just not sustainable um right. so rentals manpower that, again these are the major it, things right you know when you look at retail um you need that 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 revenue right you need that critical mass and if you start losing that it, it, it might not make sense anymore you know mm. yeah because at the end of the day it's like a taxi driver you need to do a certain number of trips per day because you have a fixed cost right you have your rental you have the diesel to pay and if you if you have that cut in in in, in travelers it just doesn't make sense anymore so yeah mm. retailers have to rethink the business models yeah right and with that you know um that that's pretty much the reality of things and you know i mean we've spent quite a lot of time on this and i really appreciate you know you spending so much time with us uh, on this show and <clears throat> Pardon me, my goodness, and uh, you know we, you know, th- thank you so much again, Keith, for spending almost an hour with us, you know, and sharing your ideas, your insights, and I think more importantly, is for everybody to get to know you better. I think that's what the podcast is all about, you know, that you've shown so much about who you are, who Keith is, and it's not that Keith is Crown Coffee, it's not that Keith is Crown Digital, but Keith is part of this whole giant, uh, uh, beautiful culture that we're trying to create over at Crown, right? So with that, we've got one last segment that we always do on every show with every guest, and that is known as the Epic Questionnaire. Basically, it is a rapid-fire 10-question list, all right? So with that... Keith, are you ready for the epic questionnaire? Okay, I'm ready. All right. <laughs> All right, question number one. One word that you love the most. Ella? One word that you dislike the most. Um, cannot. 
if you could have a conversation with one person, fictional, non-fictional, dead or alive, who would that be? Elon Musk. Everybody loves Elon Musk. Okay. Anyway, uh, what do you say to yourself in the morning? Uh, what do you say to yourself in the mirror every morning? Hmm. I don't, <laughs> you caught me out there. Um, is my hair all right? <laughs> okay, interesting. <laughs> Name one superpower that you'd like to have. Um, to really, really understand things in life. Everything. F huh. Favorite dish to eat? Um, wagyu. Um, you know, wagyu beef. Nice. Favorite yeah. travel spot? Or the next travel spot you like to visit when borders open up? Um, Turkey. I love to go to Turkey. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Something in the arts that you've always wanted to do, but you've yet to do so. In the arts? Hmm. Well, um, I, I've always wanted to, um, to perform, right? I, I love my rock and roll music and um, to be out on stage and playing my electric guitar. Ah, fantastic. Which one do you own, by the way? Um, Gibson. A Gibson. <laughs> what? Yeah, uh, secondary. Nice. We had that, yeah. So, but haven't been playing. And um, that's something I want to do. I don't want to be rock and roller. <laughs> I completely understand. My S series, my Ibanez S series is my store. It's been there for a long time already. Uh, let's see. What does, what does retirement look like to you? Retirement is working all the way and it's doing things that you love, spending time with your loved ones and enjoying the twilight years. Um, having to see kids growing up to be great people. I think that's, 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 that's retirement for me. Mm. And lastly, how do you want to be remembered? What's your legacy? Legacy is crown, you know, that we, we, despite all the odds, you know, we created a technology that would change how FMB is going to be uh, we imagine we, uh, you know, and, and I think, yeah. And Ella have been everywhere as part of everyone's lives, you know, every note of their lives. That's, that's the legacy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And that is the Epic Questionnaire with Keith Tan. It sounds like, uh, you know, Ella and his, uh, partner is going to have to, you know, uh, you know, fight for attention from time to time. You've only got 24 hours in the day and it seems that that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, that was the Epic Questionnaire with Keith Tan. No, thanks so much for joining us. And with that, all right, that's another week. That's another episode here on Edric Poon and Company, the Epic Podcast. And we are out. Peace.